high protein diets are blamed for causing osteoporosis, heart and kidney disease. And this has led to a great debate as to how much protein we can healthily consume. Now it's true that the amount of protein we need to consume is going to vary from person to person. But before we establish what our minimum and maximum range for protein intake should be, let's take a look at some of the facts and fallacies about protein. Now the first one, and probably the biggest one, is that high protein intake is going to damage your kidneys. Our kidneys are hard working organs, removing waste, excess nutrients from the body, producing urine, and filters about 180 liters of blood every day. Now a high protein diet does add to the workload of the kidneys, but there's absolutely no studies out there showing that high protein damages healthy kidneys. Now if you have kidney disease or kidney problems on the other hand, that is a different story and you may very well benefit from lower protein intake. So if you're having any problems with your kidneys at all, you should consult with your doctor first before increasing your protein intake. Let's take a quick look at osteoporosis. The theory here is that protein sucks the calcium out of the bones because of the extra acidity it adds to the body. Now there are some studies that show this does happen over the short term, but longer term studies show the trend doesn't continue and the increased protein even improves some of the hormones that help to promote bone health, like IGF-1. The last one I want to touch on is heart health. Now there's been a large number of studies done that have shown a lot of people who've developed heart disease had high protein diets. Now I did manage to get my hands on the details of one of these studies and it showed that these people also suffered from type 2 diabetes, were smokers, had high cholesterol and were either obese or overweight. Now is this all the fault of protein? Highly unlikely. Now the connection between protein and heart disease isn't clear. When I went to the American Heart Association's website to get their take on it, they felt it had more to do with the high saturated fats and LDL or bad cholesterol that came along with a high protein diet rather than the protein itself. Then I read a quote from a doctor who is the director of preventative cardiology at a hospital in Manhasset, New York. And he said that persons who consume high protein diets become satiated quickly and often forego other nutrients of a heart healthy diet like vegetables, legumes, and whole grains. So essentially what he was saying is these people didn't have a balanced diet and that was the cause of the problems. Now we're going to come back to this statement when we take a look at what our upper limit for protein should be and who should be consuming such a diet. The daily minimum recommended dietary intake for protein is 0.8 grams per kilogram or 0.36 grams per pound of body weight. Now this might be accurate for a very sedentary non-active person, but definitely not for active people. For example, if I was to apply this in my own situation, less than 9% of my daily caloric requirements would be going toward protein. Now, the Center for Disease Control and Prevention recommends that we get at least 10 to 35% of our daily calories from protein. So by this recommendation, I would be deficient. Now, it's not so much that these two recommendations contradict each other as you can't apply minimum standards to hard training very active people. Now most sedentary people wouldn't even know what their daily caloric requirements are. So it would be most helpful to them to give them a recommendation of 0.8 a gram per kilogram of body weight for their protein intake if they were wanting to figure out their daily protein requirements. Now on the other end of the scale we have the very active hard training individuals and athletes. Now the common recommendation for them is 2.2 grams per kilogram of body weight or one gram of protein per pound. Now is this higher protein intake healthy? They did a year long study on resistance training men and these men had been training on average nine years and they put them on high protein diets of around 2.5 grams to 3.3 grams of protein per kilogram and it's important to note here too that they also put them on a high fiber diet 
of about 30 grams of fiber per day. And why this is important is if you remember back to that doctor's quote that people who are on high protein diets tended not to have a balanced diet. Well, in this study, they built the balance right in as the best source of fiber is vegetables. And after one year, these men had no ill effects from their diets. So many of us, we need to have higher protein diets to support our active lifestyles, fitness goals, recovery, and of course, to keep working out while having fun. This is Lawrence from Fit and 50. We'll talk to you again in the next one.